All right, so this is my first time doing this, so um, just bear with me because I uh, might forget to say something or it might not sound as great the first time around. But, um, okay, so today we're going to start the painting portion of the drone's eye view project. Okay, remember that it's an aerial view, which means that it's from above and you're looking down at the land. So there shouldn't be any horizon lines. There shouldn't be any line where the sky and land meet. All you should see is the land. And part of the reason why I like this project is because it can be realistic or it can be abstract. So when you start your picture, okay, you want to kind of think about what things you like about the picture. Okay, is it just how the composition with having the lines and the shapes or do you like the colors that are in the picture? Do you like the different variations of green? Do you like how this is reddish orange? Um, and you want, because when you do your own, it doesn't really, the colors don't need to be the same. Your composition will be the same because you're transferring it onto your artisan paper or artigan paper, but the coloration is something that you could invent or something that you can make realistic. Okay? The more you invent, the more abstract it will most likely be. Um, you might want to have certain th elements be abstract, like maybe making this pink and purple, but then still leaving in the tree and the shadows. That way you know that you're looking at the land. So you're playing in between the lines of abstraction and realism. So before... Uh, when you get started, you're going to have a photocopy. Okay, that photocopy you're going to use to transfer onto your black sheet of paper. Okay, in order to transfer, you don't have to shade the back. You can if, if you want to, but you don't have to shade the back. Okay, this method, as long as um, you press down hard enough, will transfer it without without shading the back of your photocopy. Okay, um, first put a magazine down. Okay, then you, I would tape your photocopy to your paper. Again, your photocopy isn't the entire size of your paper, so you're gonna have to still draw some of your composition off onto your black sheet of paper. Okay, we're not cutting the black sheet of paper, we're making our composition take up the entire black sheet of paper. Okay, so, the white won't be on your black paper at first. The white will put on afterwards. So every when I say composition, I mean the lines and shapes that make up this image. So you're going to put the magazine underneath. Okay, then you're going to trace over with pen all of your composition lines. Okay, and if you do it hard enough, you're starting to create grooves in the black paper that you'll become more visible when you put the white um, compressed charcoal on top. So this might this is going to take some time to transfer everything depending on how detailed your picture is. Okay, so all of that I already did. Okay, after you've used your pen to trace over all your composition lines, okay, you're going to have you're going to use um, a piece of white compressed charcoal to rub over the top of your picture. Okay, that should allow uh, basically everything that you trace to appear onto your paper. Okay, the more you uh, use the charcoal, the more visible these lines start to become. Again, make sure you go all the way to the edge of your composition. So these lines that I did over here, I did in pencil because the, the pen isn't going to take up the whole picture. I take off the photocopy at some point so you can see all, the whole black drawing. You don't need that anymore. And then you'll need your color copy in a little bit. Move the magazine out of the way. Use the flat surface to get 
all of this white. Okay. All right. So now you have your colored copy, your drawing. Okay. Now you're going to need to, again, decide what colors you're going to use. So you're using watercolors, okay, I would put this, if you, I'm right-handed, so I would put this to the left, if you're left-handed, I'd put it to the right of you. Um, you want to still be able to look at it, okay. After you are done with the drawing materials, you can put those away and you can get your painting materials. So for painting, you'll need a paper towel, a water container, you can use one of these plastic trays to mix on. You also can use color pencil for anything that's um, super detailed or too small to do with your paintbrush, and then you will want a watercolor set. Okay, so as you get started. So I'm going to look, I do like the fact that this like orange and green, so since that's something I know that I like, I'm going to start there and leave that as part of the picture. And you just want to make sure that you use enough water, get enough pigment, and that you're staying in the lines so that your shapes stay the same and you can invent the color as much as you want. Okay, so the only difference between watercolor and like tempera or acrylic is that in order to make something lighter, you can use white, but you also could just use more water. You already have a white ground, so that's gonna take up, that might lighten your colors as you go anyway. Paper is absorbing a lot of the, the um, color, so you might need to go back over it a couple times. This was the um, shadow of the tree. So. Oranges opposite is blue. So when I add in the shadow, I'll mix some blue into the orange. Okay. Um, so as you go, uh, you're going to have to start to, I guess, think about what things you want, what colors. It might be a little overwhelming because there's so many different places to color in at first. So just keep referencing back to your picture, finding things that you like or don't like and things that you want to invent or keep realistic um, so that you have a successful time painting. Okay. All right. So... Make sure to ask any questions before you get started. Make sure you have all the materials you need. And I'll see you in class.